Hello everyone. Uh, I've been talking to a couple of people lately who expressed a desire. Uh, most most of them are non-programmers who expressed a desire that they want to learn a little bit of programming. They believe that learning a little bit of coding uh, would empower them to to automate a part of their uh, daily tasks and uh, make their life that much more better. So we thought we'd come up with a series of videos basically for non-programmers who wanted to try out a little bit of programming and get started off with programming without having to go through a 200 page uh, getting started with programming book. So this series what we're going to do is we're going to cover the very basics of programming and uh, the language that we're using in this series is uh, Microsoft uh, C Sharp but programming concepts that you learn in the series would be applicable for any language. So without going into a lot of theories, what we're going to do is we're going to jump straight into programming and uh, hopefully if you follow along with common sense, you'll just learn some of the programming concepts that you would learn by, by reading a 200 page getting started with programming book. So we're going to go ahead and start off the development environment which is called Visual Studio. The edition that I'm using is uh, Visual Studio Ultimate Edition. It's a paid version but you can also download a free version which is called the Visual Studio Express Edition which would allow you to do the exact same things that I'm doing here at least for the scope of things that we're going to do in this series. Uh, the functionality is going to be exactly the same. What we're going to do out here is going to click on File, New, Project. And I could spend hours explaining every single option that's there on the screen. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to pick console applications. Basically, the point here is that we could have created websites using C Sharp. We could have created Windows applications using C Sharp. The best way to get started off is to use a console application because that just gives you a black screen and a clean slate where you can start writing code and you can focus on syntax of the language and get to learn the language really well rather than worrying about the intricacies of how to draw a button or how to draw a window. So we're going to take a simple console application. We're going to call it the hello world application and we're going to start writing a little bit of code here. Now, once you click on this, what Visual Studio is doing is it's going ahead and creating a project for you where you can start writing code and it creates a program.cs for you and it creates a main uh, function where you can start writing code. I, I'll go into the nitty gritties of what a function is and uh, what a class is. But for now, let's just assume that this is the place where we can write code. A couple of concepts that you need to understand when you're dealing with any programming language is that programming languages are no different from human languages, that they are just a means of expressing your intent. Now, if you think about human languages, what are the things that you do with a human language? The things that you do with a human language is you use a human language to say things. Now, notice I'm just writing random English here. And the reason why I can do that is I'm putting these two double slashes in front of what I'm writing. And this is a way of indicating to C Sharp compiler that what I'm saying here is not a part of my program. It's just a comment. Don't don't compile it. Don't do anything with it. It's not an instruction that I'm giving you. It's just a comment that I'm leaving for myself. Don't touch it. Leave it alone. So I could write anything here and C Sharp compiler would just ignore it. It's just a comment that I'm making to myself or to other programmers who might be reading this code. So one way to write comments is using double slash. The other way to write comments is using uh, this notation out here where you start a comment using this notation and you end a comment using this notation. And those are your basic comments in C Sharp. So as I was saying, back to programming concepts. So the things that you would do with the programming language were very similar to things that you would do with a normal language. And the things that you would do with a normal language is that you use a normal language to communicate. You use a normal language to say things. The normal languages that we use on a day-to-day -day basis are also used to listen to things that people say. And we use those things as inputs. So you ask somebody, hello, how are you doing? And somebody says, good. So what you're doing is you're taking in an input. You're expecting the other person to say something. The languages are often used to say things. They're also used to collect input from others. Now, based on the inputs that you collect from others, what you can also do is you can evaluate those inputs so you can effectively take decisions based on those inputs. So if somebody says that, you know, I'm having a very bad day, uh, you ask him why is he having a bad day but if he says he's doing good you take a discussion in a totally different direction altogether so you listen to things and then based on those 
things that you listen to based on those inputs that you get from somebody else you take decisions so that's that's one of the things that we do and depending on what the decisions evaluate into we also take action these are four basic things that we do with any language so if somebody says okay pass me that bottle of uh, water and uh, you just take the bottle of water and pass it to the person on the other hand if somebody says how are you doing and you say i'm doing good versus you're saying i'm not doing good is going to take uh, a totally different course of conversation so the person is basically taking actions based on your inputs and what you're saying he's taking certain decisions of what to say next and he's acting accordingly so four things that you do with a with a normal language exactly four things that you would also do with a programming language a couple of additional concepts that we need to run into two fundamental building blocks of a language that can help us get started off with any language one is the words that we use in that language the vocabulary of the language and the other is the grammar the way in which we lay out the words uh, the punctuation marks the order of the words the arrangement of the words if we know these two things really well we can pick up a language in computer science the words of a language are often referred to as the keywords the grammar of a language is often referred to as the syntax of the language and if you know the keywords associated with the language and the syntax of the language you are usually in a very good position to learn the language and that's going to be our focus in this series is to get you introduced to the various keywords of the c sharp programming language and the syntax of the language if you know two things you should be well on your way to learning c sharp and using c sharp to write your own code so like i said the first thing that we do with a programming language is we use a programming language to say things and in in case of computer science the way to say things is to display things on on screen so the easiest way to say something in c sharp is to use console dot write line and say hello if if i run this it's going to pop up a black console window write a line of text on it saying hello and the window is going to go away so let's quickly run this and notice the window came it said hello and disappeared now i don't want the window to disappear i want the window to stay on so what i'm going to do is i'm going to tell c sharp the window is, isn't supposed to disappear i want to actually wait till somebody hits the enter key so i'm going to tell c sharp just say hello and also read a line which means wait till somebody hits the enter key now if i press f5 to run this notice how it says hello and then it waits there till i press the enter key and when i press the enter key it disappears so that's the first thing that we've done with this language we've printed something on the console the the next thing is we listen to things that people are saying and the best way to listen to things that people are saying in programming language is to allow people to type something and whatever they're typing put it inside a variable now variables are interesting variables uh, are no different from the variables that you used in class 4 when you were doing algebra and somebody said x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 10 what's x plus y you said okay 15 so these are labels that you assign to values in computer science variables are very similar if you think about it logically of course they occupy a little bit of memory and depending on the type of the variable a variable can be a string or an integer or a large number which we often refer to as a double the type of the variable that you use decides the amount of memory it occupies but not going into all those details if you think about it logically variables are no different from very basic variables that you used in algebra in class 5 where you said okay x which is an integer is equal to 5 and y which is an integer is equal to 10 and what i want to do is instead of printing hello right now now i wanted to print x plus y so it would go out there print 15 on screen and wait for your input notice this semicolons out here they are very sim similar to the full stops in the english language is it is your way to end a specific command that you are giving and start another command very similar to the full stop in the english language the first example that we had done what we had done was we had done console dot right line hello now one of the things that we talked about in this thing is uh, we said that programming languages are used to say things which we've already uh, done using console dot right line we know that console dot right line is how we show things to the end user on the screen console dot uh, read line 
is what we're going to cover next, which is our way of taking an input. So let's say I already showed hello on screen. In this case, let's say I want to take the user's name. I want to tell the user, enter your first name and then wait for his input. Let him enter his first name and then say hello, followed by the first name that he just entered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do console dot right line and I'm going to say, please enter your first name and I'm going to wait till he enters his first name. We've already seen that the way to wait till somebody enters something is to read a line from the console, allow the person to write a line of text, hit enter and wait till he hits enter. That's exactly what we're going to do here. But this time we're going to say that I'm going to use a variable. The variable is string u. It could be anything. So this is a string kind of a variable and I'm going to say console dot read line here. So what I'm saying here is show the user Please enter your first name on screen. Uh, let's just remove this code from here to, to, to reduce the confusion. I'm going to, I'm, I'm telling the user, enter your first name. The user sees that message on screen. Now I'm waiting for a line, waiting till the time he enters his name and hits enter. Whatever he enters comes in this variable u out here. And I'm saying hello, followed by a space, followed by u just like we did x plus y in the previous example. Interesting to note out here that in C sharp, just like you can add up the values of two variables, five and 10, and they become 15, you can add two strings and they literally get concatenated or added back to back. So let's run this code. It says, please enter your name. And I'm gonna enter Mr. A, B, C, D. And I'm gonna hit enter and it says, hello, Mr. A, B, C, D. So we've covered the concept of being able to print something on screen. We've, we've covered the concept of variables, but we've covered the concepts of data types as well, because we, in this example where we did int x, x is a variable, which is an integer. In this case, u is a variable, which is text or string. So we've covered the concept of variables. We'll keep going deeper into all these concepts and you'll become more and more stronger at them as you keep writing code. But straightforward, simple concepts that we've covered here are the concept of being able to print something on the screen, which was console.write line. The concept of assigning a value inside a variable where I can say int x is equal to five or int y is equal to 10. Uh, another example where I said, okay, I'm going to let the user enter a value, take an input from the user. So I said, please enter your first name. Then I waited, I did console.read line. I waited till somebody entered the line and hit the enter key. After he had done that, I took that value, stored it inside the variable u and I printed hello followed by whatever the user had entered and I waited for a keystroke again. We're going to go deeper into all of these concepts. Some I would recommend continue viewing the series as as you start using the language more and more, you'll become familiar with it. This was just to get you a very, very basic flavor of programming. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.